All right, in this video we're going to hit on section 4.1, dealing with angle measurement. So we talked a lot in class, but the one thing we're going to talk about is this new way to measure angles, and that way is what we call radians. So I want to quickly draw you a picture of what we're talking about with one radian. So if we have an angle here, and um, we have the initial side here on the positive x-axis, <laughs> sorry, it's so bad there, and uh, the terminal side is here on the, uh, going up here, and this angle we'll call it theta, okay, so we'll just call it theta here. Now, when is one angle, one radian created? I mean, we have a protractor that can measure this in degrees, but we want to talk about radians. And the key thing about a radian is one radian is created when the radius and the arc length created by the angle, right, that we call that S, are, are equal. So when the arc length is equal to the radius, we have what we call one radian. One radian is there. So the formula that we get for what a radian is theta equals S divided by R. And now this should make sense because when S and R are equal, we would have one radian, whether it's 5 and 5 or 6 and 6 or 22 and 22 or 9.5 and 9.5. When you divide two numbers of the same, you obviously get one. So when uh, the arc length and the radius are equal, we get one radian, okay? So our formula to figure out radians here is arc length divided by radius. So this is our big formula here that we need to understand for radians. Now this is not for degrees, this is strictly for radians. So think about theta always being in radians. Alright, so um, if I had a smaller circle here, so I'm just going to draw a smaller circle here. And again, I'm really bad at drawing circles. This is actually isn't too bad. But anyway, if I had a smaller circle there, notice that the angle didn't change. I did not change that angle at all. So what did change? Well, the um, arc length changed. So that this yellow arc length is now smaller than that green arc length. But guess what? The radius is smaller too. So even though we made a smaller circle, we still have one radian at the exact same location, about right here, because the arc length and the radius are equal in size. So one question that we get um, is how many radians are in a circle? Because everybody knows there's 360 degrees in a circle. So everybody knows knows that there are 360 degrees in a circle. So how many radians are there? Well, if we think about the um, radius here, so here's the radius, R. Um, if we think about the arc length, so we got about right there, there's about one radian right there. And then we continue to move around. So we take that same distance. Remember, again, the arc length's got to be equal to the radius. So take that over to maybe here. Here's where we got about two radians. Okay, so there's a, a second radian. Okay. Um, then we're going to go over, take that same arc length to maybe right around here. So come over here. So now here's three radians. Okay. So take that same arc length, same angle, same radius length there to uh, probably somewhere around here to get uh, four radians. And then we're going to continue that around. Again, that same arc length maybe take us somewhere right around here. So that'll be five radians. And one more takes us right to about here somewhere for six radians. So there is some leftover here. There is some leftover here. It's not quite one full radian, but there is a little bit over six radians. So to try to get a really good exact grasp, not an approximate one, an exact grasp on how many radians there are in a circle, all we got to do is think about the arc length of an entire circle. So remember our formula here for radians is arc length divided by radius. So if I think about um, an entire circle. The arc length of an entire circle is known as the circle circumference. And if you didn't know this, circumference C is equal to 2 pi R. Um, I heard a lot of kids in class say pi R squared. That's the area of a circle. So let's not think about that. So anyway, circumference is 2 pi R. So if I think about the circumference or the arc length of an entire circle, 2 pi R, and I'm going to divide that by the radius. Now notice here that these radiuses are going to cancel. So if the radius is 5 or 10 or 15 or a million, you know, this huge circle, it doesn't matter. Those radiuses will cancel and we get that one full circle has 2 pi radians. So we know that one full circle is 360 degrees, but one full circles also 2 pi radians, and we'll just use RAD for radians there. So this is kind of our big conversion factor here. 
Okay, just like we would say our conversion factors like we talked in class, 12 inches is one foot, 5,280 feet is one mile. Our conversion factor for degrees and radians is that, uh, well, one revolution of a circle is equal to 360 degrees, which is equal to 2 pi radians. Now, we tend to reduce this a little bit, where we'll say that um, a half a revolution is equal to 180 degrees, half a circle, which is equal to half of 2 pi is just pi radians. So think of a full circle is 2 pi, half a circle would be 1 pi, obviously. So this is kind of the uh, main conversion factors we use right here. And we usually stick with this bottom one just because it's a little bit more reduced. But they're both the same. 360 degrees is 2 pi radians, or 180 degrees is pi radians. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So um, let's go up a little bit here. This picture right here, which is drawn pretty poorly, but it best resembles truly what one radian is, when the arc length S is equal to the radius R of any size circle. This picture down here just kind of shows you the different ways that we could think about how many radians go into a circle, and we think um, exactly, that's the number we like, is exactly 2 pi. All right, so... Um, Think about some angles here that we know, and let's talk about them. Let's think about a real basic angle here, and that first basic angle that we think about is um, 90 degrees, right? 90 degrees. Everybody knows 90 degrees. So in your notes here, draw a nice little circle like this and make it kind of clear. And uh, think about 90 degrees here. If I want to figure out how many radians is 90 degrees, well, I just got to do my conversion, right? And I like doing these conversions. So 90 degrees times. Now, I want the degrees to cancel. I want to get to radians. So I'm going to put 180 degrees in the bottom, and 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. Now, I could have done 2 pi radians over 360, but understand that this is just a reduced. Same thing, but just reduced. So what happens here is that my degrees cancel, and I'll be left in radians. So 90 divided by 180 is um, 1 half and then don't forget that pi is still there. So I get that 1 half pi, or sometimes we'll just put the pi on top. So pi over 2, 1 times pi is pi. So pi over 2 radians is how many, um, how many radians 90 degrees is. So 90 degrees is pi over 2 radians. Now, that's the exact answer. If you're really interested in getting an approximate answer, you can just grab your calculator and do pi divided by 2. So it's approximately, in terms of an approximate, it's 1.57 radians. So 1.57 is just the decimal equivalent to pi over 2. We would, we would tend to prefer to stay exactly, so referencing as pi over 2. So then we can go all the way around, all the way over to here. This would be 180 degrees if we go all the way over to here, 180 degrees. And 180 degrees, if I do the same kind of conversion thing here, I'll do it down here, 180 degrees. Um, Again, times, and let's see here, I'm going to go 180 degrees in the bottom times pi radians. So again, I want the degrees to cancel, so I'll put those degrees in the bottom. Radians will be on top, and notice beautifully here the 180s cancel, and I get pi radians. So just like we should have already kind of known that, 180 degrees is pi radians. Okay, um, or again, approximately, we all should all know pi is 3.14. So about 3.14 radians are in a full circle. Remember, what is a radian again? It's when the arc length equals the radius. So think about how many arc lengths we could fit, how many radiuses we could fit into this arc. In a half circle, we could fit a little bit over three radiuses in terms of distance into that arc. And then we come all the way down here. I'll switch colors just so that we can have a different color to see my arrows here. This angle right here is all the way is 270 degrees. So if I want to take a moment to convert 270 degrees, I would multiply that by, again, pi over 180. That's my conversion factor, just like if I was doing um, 12 inches in one foot. This is my conversion factor. And um, I'm going to get a reduced answer of 3 halves pi. So again, we could put the pi to the side, or we could put it on top, 3 pi over 2. It's just a preference, whatever you prefer. So I say we have 3 pi over 2 radians. And lastly, we can go um, a full circle all the way around 360 degrees. And I don't even have to do a conversion for that. We should already know through this video that 360 degrees is 2 pi radians, or just a little bit over 6. So we always have the exact answer, like pi over 2, and then we have the approximate answer, like 1.57. We prefer the exact, but it's also good that you understand where that um, approximate answer comes from.
Uh, let's do some conversions here. So let's just take you know, a couple conversions here. So let's convert 260 degrees to radians. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I want the degrees to cancel, so I'm going to put 180 degrees in the bottom, and I'm going to put pi radians on top. Once again, that's my conversion factor. This is a conversion factor, okay? Um, if you prefer 2 pi and 360, you can do that. This is just a reduced answer, that's all. So when I do this, I get 260 pi over 180, right? Just multiply. 260 times pi is 260 pi. 180 on the bottom is 180. Then the degrees cancel. I'm now in radians. Now, of course, I want to reduce this. So when you go to your calculator, when you want to reduce this, just leave the pi. I always say, hold the pi, right? Hold off on the pi. Hold the pi till the end. Kind of like dessert, right? You always want to hold off on dessert till the end. So we're going to hold off on the pi to the end. So on my calculator, I'm going to type 260 divided by 180. Again, not typing in the pi because I'm going to get an irrational number. And I'm going to convert that to a fraction so it reduces that for me. And it reduces to 13 over 9. So I get 13 pi over 9 radians. Now, if you're really interested in how exactly or approximately what that is, you can type in 13 pi divided by 9. It's about 4.5... Um, four radians. So it's a little over about, well, pretty close to four and a half radians, okay, which is about, again, 260 degrees. Let's try another one right here. So again, pi radians divided by 180 degrees, and um, on top I get 550 pi over 180 degrees. 80, right? The degrees cancel, so I'm now in radians. But again, I want to hold off on the pi, wait to eat your pie for dessert, and I want to just figure out what 550 divided by 180 reduces to, and it reduces to 55 over 18. So I get 55 pi over 18. Some people like to put the pi to the side. Some people like to make sure it's on top of the 55. I don't really care. And um, if you want an approximation for that, this is bigger than a full circle, right? 550 is bigger than a full circle. Full circle is 360. 550 is bigger. So this is about 9.60 um, radians. So it's, it's, remember, one circle has about 6.28 radians. So we are bigger than a full circle. All right, now we can also have negative angles. It's just the same thing, but going into a clockwise rotation. So I'm going to multiply, I'm sorry, I wrote equals, I meant multiply, by pi radians over 180 degrees, and let's see here again, it's negative 280 pi divided by 180. Now in my calculator, like I've been saying, I'm going to hold off on the pi, I get negative 280 divided by um, 180, I'm sorry, yeah, negative 280 divided by 180, and that reduces to negative 14 ninths, so I get negative 14 pi over 9, okay? So it's really simple to convert these. The circled answers here are my exact answers that I like. You could find the approximations if you want, but I like exact answers that are going to involve that pi. All right, let's convert some the other way now. Let's convert these ones from radians to degrees. So this time, I'm going to multiply by my conversion factor, but this time I want the radians to cancel, right? Because this is measured in radians. We usually don't have to write the RAD there. It's kind of implied. So if there's no degree symbol, it's radians. So that means I want the pi radians on the bottom to cancel and the 180 degrees on top so I can end in degrees. Now my radians cancel. Now look what's awesome here is also the pi's cancel. This is awesome, right? So I get 2 times 180. 2 times 180 is 360 on top. On the bottom I just have 5 and then I could do 360 divided by 5 and I get 72 degrees. So 2 fifths pi, or 2 pi over 5, is 72 degrees. Let's do the same thing here. This is in radians. How do I know? Well, I don't see a degree symbol, and I see the pi there. It's kind of a dead giveaway. So I get a pi radian on the bottom and 180 degrees on top. So the pi's cancel, and so do the radians. So I get 7 times 180. Or another way you can do this on your calculator, if you don't want to do 7 times 180 divided by 8, you could put 7 eighths into parentheses and multiply it by 180, and you get 157 points. 0.5 degrees. Or like I said, you can do 7 times 180 divided by 8, and you get the same answer. But if you do use the fraction, make sure you use parentheses around it. All right, here's another one, one last one here. So we have, again, pi radians. So we want the pi on the bottom so that it cancels. Put 180 degrees on top, and the radians measurement cancels, and the pi cancels, and I get negative 31 halves times 180. So I'm going to use parentheses, so negative 31 halves 
times 180, and I get that this is negative 200 and seven, negative 2,790 degrees. Oh my goodness! Well, again, 31 halves is, is obviously well bigger than one. So this is much bigger than um, one full circle here. It's much much bigger. Um, so we see that our answers here end up being these kind of nice answers. Now, one problem I want to show to kind of watch out for is that a lot of times I can say something like this: 3.2 radians. Now there's no degree symbol, so you know it's um, you know it's radians. Now some people say, wait a minute, I thought radians have to have pi in it. No, they don't. Exact values have pi in it for radians, but 3.2 could be radians, right? Because remember, a full circle has 6.28 radians. A uh, half a circle is 3.14 radians. This is a little bit bigger than half a circle. So when I do this, I'm going to multiply by again. I want the pi radians on the bottom and 180 degrees on top. Now the issue here is the radians cancel, but this pi down here doesn't have a pi to cancel with. So when I go to my calculator, I'm going to do 3.2 times 180, and I'm going to divide it by pi. And all the previous three problems, the pi canceled. Well, there wasn't a pi here to cancel with the one down here. So what are you going to do? So that means you have to just divide by pi. So I get approximately 183 point three five degrees. Now this should make sense because like we said we knew that a half a circle is pi which is 3.14 radians, so 3.2 should be just a little bit bigger than a half a circle, and 183 degrees is that. So watch out for problems like that. Don't get tricked. These ones over here, the pi canceled because there was a pi in the starting problem. When it says 3.2, it just because there's no pi there doesn't mean it can't be in radians. All right? And let's do a couple more with revolutions here. I like making sure we know how to convert revolutions. 2.3 revolutions. This is one, two full revolutions, and then about a third or 0.3, uh, three tenths of a revolution after that. So let's convert this. So let's think about this. Let's convert it to degrees first. If I want to convert it to degrees, I want revolutions on the bottom, so it cancels, degrees on top. Now the conversion factor is that one revolution is 360 degrees. So if I just take 2.3 and times it by 360, I get that this is 800 in 28 degrees. Real simple. Now if I want to convert that to radians, I can continue on and I say, okay, I want uh, 180 degrees in the bottom, pi radians on top, that way the degrees cancel, and I just do 828. Um, now remember, I'm going to hold the pi, like we always say, hold the pi, so I'm just going to do 828 divided by 180, and I get uh, 23 fifths, so I get 23 fifths pi. Now, the reason why I always say hold the pi is because if you put pi into the calculator, you're going to get an irrational number back that can't convert to a fraction. So we keep the 828 divided by 180 separate and then just hold on the pi, put it on the side, just like we put our dessert pi on the side as well. So same thing here. Let's convert this 0.79 revolution. So not even a full revolution. Let's convert this right to um, radians. No degrees. Right to radians. Well, I want revolutions on the bottom so that it cancels. And I know that one revolution around a circle is equal to 2 pi um, radians. Right? So that's the conversion. One revolution of a circle is 2 pi radians. So that's a simple conversion. So I can easily convert this. So that's going to be 0.79. And again, hold off on the pi. I'm just going to take 0.79 times 2. And I get 1.58, which as a fraction is 79 fiftieths. I don't mind you saying 1.58. That is a terminating decimal. And then pi. Remember, I didn't type pi on my calculator. Or you could do the fraction there and get 79 over 50 pi. Okay, so pretty easy to do these problems. Um, hopefully that was a simple lesson for you, and um, we'll talk more in class.